Bartolomeo's Anglicus, the 13th century scholastic, claimed that stones are the bones of the earth, for they make the world stable and prevent its fabric from fragmentation. Without rock, humans could not build walls, pavement, bridges. They are the foundation of the courts of the kings and the fabric of the cities, the hard substance of human societies. We, humans, we walk upright over earth because long ago, the minerals become a partner with organic life in mobility. The vertebral bone is the foundation of motion. The stone around which the muscles organize to walk, to move, to, to work. And had the organic not bonded with, with calcium as a shield or as a bone, the sedimentary rock, like limestone, would have never have been created. Limestone is a thick cemetery of mineral that has become animal and then rock again. So stones thus forge relations, conjoining things in a productive and non-intuitive ways. Stone is a catalyst for relation. Bruno Latour argues that things are energetic mediators rather than passive tools, actants forever lost in friendships and duels. Uh, and stone is for us humans just one of many objects that constitutes the realm of non-human. But humans are for stone one of many agents in a non-lithic realm who are susceptible to being drawn into alliances with stone. And even if every object in its own way is stubborn and in its own particular way Stone metonymically stands for obduracy of all matter. So I think we need a more potent, more complex understanding of its materiality, its stubbornness, its plots, its structures, its agency, its inherent temporality. So mapping an ecology of human, human lithic enmeshment thus contributes to a re-evaluation of elemental vitality and the agency of inhuman and its role in a human social order. And I want to explore those issues using the examples from the prehistory of cars, limestone plateau on the border between Western Slovenia and Eastern Italy. Here, a unique stony landscape formed by the dissolution of limestone and shaped into the bizarre mishmash of caves, shafts, sinkholes and outcrops has formed. And the landscape itself testifies of a kind of enormous creative potential of the material world. And if we are really interested in past landscapes, we need a kind of more subtle awareness of the complicated web of connections between bodies and things that constitute them. Approaching the diversity of relation between human and non-humans creatures, things, stuff, but also different ways non-humans relate to each other is a key to archaeology that does not radically separate humans and non-humans. So, on the cars, the new alliances between stone and people began with the erection of fortified settlements and enclosures. And this new partnership with stone is a result of kind of long development that included, includes other non-humans, particularly animals, as it started with the formation of Neolithic pastoral systems and increased adoption of cattle in a copper age, obviously for the use of milk and milk products. This was the driving force behind social change, which can be recognized in the larger social cohesion and territoriality of communities. And this resulted first in reduced mobility, tethered to specific places, which led to the construction of material markers of territoriality of tenure, like monumental structures such as ramparts, enclosures, and barrels. Large scale uh, impact on the landscape can be detected after 2500 BC. Anthropogenic horizons of burnt ground and charcoal that appear in sinkhole infills suggest burning of uh, vegetation and removal of tree stumps for forest clearance. And this period of intensive modification of landscape is followed by the fast accumulation of mainly Eolian sediments, which suggest much more open landscape than was previously. But this impact is particularly visible in a landscape. 
in a form of permanent stone structures such as barrels, carings, low stone walls, creating a new landscape patterns. And these patterns are result of a new material practices. Very simple interactions between people and stones involving collection, transport, and the position of surface rubble on small distances. Stones were collected from the surface and piled into the carings, low banks, or dry stone walls on the edges of the cultivated areas. And carrying fields are one of the most ubiquitous patterns resulting from those interactions. From the volume and distribution of carings, we can calculate that around 200 to 250 kilograms of stone and rubble was collected from each square meter around the, the, the carrying. And this means basically more than 250 gestures of bending, picking up, carrying, dropping stones per square meter, changing human bodies in the process, and mainly, if we believe ethnographical accounts, bodies of children. <clears throat> but stones are not just passive things waiting to be collected and dumped. They have their own vitality and agency. Increased erosion of topsoil exposed new stones and rubble that has to be collected and dumped again. Stones literally grow in exposed soil as a response to human intervention. And stones, durable and hard, can also be very plastic, as they can be arranged in a different forms and pa patterns and shapes. So, so stones were stacked into a series of walls or in checks following the shape of the hills. They delimit several long strips running across the slope that are internally divided by walls, forming a series of rectangular fields in a brickwork fashion. Some of the walls can be very substantial. Larger, larger than they would need to be if just necessary to, de to delineate the plots uh, and fields or to keep animals from, from straying. And stones can also be arranged along the tracks. We can see walled tracks consisting of two parallel walls. Uh, few meters apart that run across the landscape and connect pastures with the hillfolds. Bounded, these wall tracks demonstrate regular movement of animals and the need to direct and control the flow of bodies in the landscape. But these features and patterns were not just arbitrarily imposed on the landscape. The surface was not just kind of passive object of human agency. This craggy, rough, irregular landscape was full of possibilities for confederation. So creating patterns with stone is not a domestication of an element, but a human lithic collaboration that recognizes the inherent patterns in stony that this stony landscape already holds. Walls form the shape of the hill, uh, enclosures circle hilltops, cairns are erected on exposed bedrocks. So people were just listening, were part of the landscape. So the material world fixes the way individuals interact, move and this dictates new skills, habits and actions. It uh, imposes new body techniques. In this way, it trains and disciplines individuals. As Michel Foucault says, stones can make people docile and knowable. And how? How? Shirley Strum and Bruno Latour distinguish between complex and complicated societies. Complexity in this context means that it's difficult for participants to decide who is a member of the group and what is the nature of the social interaction. Participants, like these baboons, only have their bodies, skills, their intelligence and history of, inter of interactions at their disposal to maintain social relations. Establishing a stable society is difficult. This is, society can disappear if not performed. Nothing fixes or stabilizes. So, society is held together only using soft tools. It is soft, it is vulnerable, without bones to keep it firm. And stable society can only emerge when additional resources between bodies and social skills are mobilized. Material resources or symbols, like this crosswalk, uh, can be used to reinforce a particular form of society. 
They permit the shift of social life away from complexity to complication. Social life made out of, out of succession of simple operations. The nature of social interaction is stabilized by the use of durable material resources. So individuals can extend their presence even when they are not physically present in the social interaction by delegating some of them, their, their skills to the material world, which serve as a kind of hard, durable social skeleton. So this multitude of traces of these patterns related to the prehistoric fields and land use are not just dump records of the ways prehistoric people utilize the land, but fragments of media through which social life in the landscape was organized and practiced. Thus new configurations, new patterns in the landscape, new human lithic configurations are result and media through which durable, stable, fixed society emerged. Stone provided the foundation for new social relations, especially land tenure, which after generations of negotiations and performances become in a way ossified in a landscape pattern. But stone, hard and durable, can also send messages over long time spans. And because stone persists so long, its material intrusion into any given time will carry multiple histories a durable cache of aggregated stories. This is the reason we can still see those patterns and study them. Stone also forges relations with us, archaeologists, and mediates our relations with the past societies. It is kind of material connection that spurs narratives. So, stone entering the alliance with humans and help to fix the social relations making the social relations between people, but also between people and animals, people and plants, people and land, durable and stable. Walled track fields, carry fields, allow the habitual routine movement of people and animals across the landscape. People and animals move on a predictable daily scale and seasonal rhythms, moving from settlements to communal pastures, where they were kept in large compounds, pastured and then funneled into the walled paths that moved herds back, back uh, from the fields to the settlements. And these walls prevented animals and people from entering the fields and visually demonstrated the lineage or individual tenure of the land. So, stones, the bones of the earth, ground the society's stability and prevent it from pulling apart. Without stones, we would possess only the bars of our lives. Stones arrive in so many forms and shapes, holding so much power to sustain relations, to forge alliances that profoundly changes every society in which stones enter. Thank you.